Hello, this is Robert Rickover at Body Learning. And today my guest is Ruth Rutberg, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in Amherst, Massachusetts. Her first involvement with the technique was over 40 years ago, and she's been a teacher for almost nine years now. And, we're, and she works with a wide variety of students. We're going to talk today about an Alexander Technique related process which is goes under different names, um, sometimes constructive rest, sometimes it's called the Alexander Technique lying down process. I've heard it referred to as active rest. Um, I'm sure there are several others. And we're just and it's a process that's very helpful for anybody even if they're not taking Alexander lessons. And we're going to just talk a little bit about it and how uh, it, you might want to, how you could benefit from it. Uh, Ruth, welcome to the program. Thank you so much, Robert. Well, it's good having you on the show. This is actually our second uh, podcast interview. That's right. Um, so could you begin by giving our listeners a very, very brief description of the Alexander Technique? Sure, I'd love to. The Alexander Technique, as one of uh, the teachers in Matthews told me once, that she would say, is it's a way of becoming more comfortable in your body. She tried to simplify that for the young children she was working with. I think it's a great startup. It's uh, a way for yes. you to become more comfortable. And I would add, not just in your body, but in yourself. Because comfort in your thinking, how you think about yourself, how you react, how you respond to others, has a lot to do with self-comfort. Yes, and, and, and that's a very nice uh, description. And that is, um, one could say that that's kind of the aim of Alexander lessons. And it's also, I think, to a certain extent, the aim of the constructive rest process that we're going to be talking about. Do you want to uh, give a little short description of constructive rest? Sure. And I'm going to add one more name to the list, and that would be semi-supine. Semi-supine, yes. Mm -hmm. Sure. And that yeah. describes how you are lying down. Supine means you're lying on your back. Semi, meaning half, that you're not fully on your back because your knees are usually bent with either the feet resting on the same support surface like the floor or a table or at least the knees are bent and then the legs are supported with pillows or on the legs you're near a couch and your you know lower legs are resting on the seat of the couch or they're resting on a chair or something like that but that's where it's semi of semi supine mm -hmm. And and generally, it's done on a fairly firm surface, not necessarily a wooden floor, maybe a carpet or a massage table, that sure. kind of thing. Yes. And the reason for that, rather than resting in bed, mm -hmm. is that we're actually not wanting you to relax to go to sleep, but it's an active rest. That was one of the things you called it, an active rest, where... You, we want you to be conscious in your thinking. We want you to be able to become aware of how it feels to be on the surface. And if you have a firm surface, you get a lot more feedback than if you're in a squishy mattress. Yeah, exactly. And as one of the other teachers I interviewed on this pointed out, most of us don't have a lot of back consciousness. We don't, we're not used to sensing what's going on in the backs of our bodies. And of course, lying on a firm surface can give you that, potentially can give you that feedback. That's I, right. I guess the other thing that we should mention is generally there is some support under the head, under the person's head. Um, there are differences of opinion about how much support that should be. But for most people, something, and Alexander teachers often use books, paperback books or foam pads, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I'm a fond uh, 
believer in using National Geographics mm-hmm. uh, because it's got a squared off uh, binding mm-hmm. and they're all the same height. So you can make kind of small incremental changes. Mm-hmm. And when you say the amount of support, we're talking about the elevation of the head away from the table or the floor that you're on. Right. And, and yeah. Yeah. Well, so if you think about when you're standing, if you looked at someone in profile, the back of the head would not be in the same plane as like where the shoulder blades are. Right. Right. So when you're lying down, the weight of the head would fall down to gravity and that would not be so good for your neck. That well, for most people, it would mean they their necks would be arching back backwards, and that's right. Yeah, we and don't it would really make want a lot that. of compression yeah. in the neck. It yeah. would not be good for the discs. And what we're looking for is a way to support an ease and an opening of the discs and an opening of the muscles and the joints. Mm-hmm. So we're looking for a way that you can rest with the least stress in your body. Right. And I think it's important to point out that the books go under just the head. Typically, typically your occiput is resting on the books. Not, uh, there's nothing pressing up against your neck. That's right. Your neck is kind of suspended freely. And that's a very, very important aspect of it. Well, I think we've done a pretty good job of describing the position. And uh, we'll put a link to a site that has quite a few illustrations and pictures of people lying down so you, i think anyone interested can get a pretty good idea of of how to do it um well how how to configure themselves mm-hmm. now i guess the next question is uh once a person is in that position uh what would be your advice for someone who um perhaps doesn't have access to an alexander teacher and is exploring this on his own, her own, his or her own? Mm-hmm. Well, the first thing um, is that just the act of lying down is really very useful. And whether or not you're taking lessons 10 minutes a day, once a day, for the rest of your life, <laughs> is mm-hmm. really, really useful. And if it's not for the rest of your life, try it for the next 10 days. Um, it's much more important to develop a steady daily practice of five or 10 minutes than, oh, I'm going to do this for 40 minutes today and then I won't do it for another week. Mm-hmm. And what to do while you're lying down, it might sound a little odd to people who haven't studied the Alexander technique, but if I said, well, don't do anything, I mean, what would that mean to you? You don't have to think about anything to begin with, the position itself is doing a lot of good things for you. It's letting the discs replenish with fluid, which keeps them nice and plump, and that protects your vertebrae. And it's helping to rest your postural muscles, which when you're upright, they're meant to be working for long periods of time, but they need a rest. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, if you're someone who's lifting kids, lifting books, carrying a satchel, have your arms up at a computer all the time, swinging an axe, whatever you're doing, playing the violin, you need to rest. You need to rest those muscles that have been lifting and carrying and manipulating things. So just stopping and And, doing nothing. And not having, uh, not intending to think anything perhaps initially, although I'm sure for most people thoughts will come and go and you don't want to necessarily push thoughts away. But I think for a lot of people, the experience of being consciously at rest, fully supported in a configuration that, as you say, really encourages lengthening and widening through the whole body is is, uh, maybe a new thing for a lot of people. I think it's a lot. It's very new for a lot of people. I mean, I'd say the, you know, the closest in our more popular culture would be the power nap where you're mm-hmm. not intending to, you know, take a, a siesta for two hours, but mm-hmm. just a short, brief stop. And the difference here is uh, I tell my students to keep your eyes open, for one thing, so you don't fall asleep, but also so that you can develop this conscious awareness while you're resting. It's something that we're not used to doing. Oh, I can feel more relaxed 
while my eyes are open. I don't have to fall asleep to mm-hmm. become relaxed. Exactly. And and the particular configuration, whatever version of it you use, uh, does um, take just biomechanically, I guess you could say, does take quite a bit of pressure off your spinal column and your neck. And if if nothing else came of it other than that, um, I think if you were to actually, if you've never done this, do it for a week or two, as you suggest, um, I think it's quite likely you'll be amazed at the results. It's a, it's a s- simple, very low cost, pretty much zero cost process. And it does have some pretty powerful effects. That's right. And then I, I wanted to add on to something you said about at first, you might not want to think of anything and you don't want to suppress your thoughts. And no, we don't want to suppress our thoughts. But I would say that in learning the Alexander Technique, we do learn, we have the capacity to still our thoughts, to come to a quiet. That can be very restful for our busy minds. Mm -hmm. And then from there, we can start learning to send our self messages. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that is really what the Alexander Technique is, is learning how to send those messages and what messages to send. And even without a teacher, there are many fine books and many fine websites where you can read a little bit about, well, what are those messages I would be sending to myself? Mm -hmm. And, you know, the classic ones, uh, the way we learn them from Alexander, and even here there might be a little variance in words, but how I would say to my students, allow the neck to be free so that the head can go forward and up, so that the back can lengthen and widen, so that the knees can free forward. And you can go on with that, so that the fingers and toes lengthen, so that the elbows release away. All this so the breathing becomes more free. Right. These are all basically lengthening or expanding directions. And and I, I think it might be... Important to point out that head uh, moving up when you're lying down really uh, is out. I mean, it's your because you're rotated 90 degrees, so your head releasing away from your your torso would be yes, the or, kind of direction there. Yes, yeah. or up is always in the direction of your spine. Of your spine, so exactly. Your head is releasing away from the rest of your spine. Yeah. And I I think, actually, for anyone who really wants to pursue this on their own, uh, they would do very well to get a copy of Missy Vineyard's book, where she uh, has, um, I believe she has some some specific information on, on, on constructive rest, but she also introduces um, a different kind of direction which I guess could be called uh, inhibitory directions or negative directions. Yes, and uh, Missy was my teacher mm. for, um, you know, when I became designated or certified. So I did three years of training and still study with her some 11 and a half years after I started training with her. Um, the book is How You Stand, How You Move, How You Live. And it's published in 2007. And mm. yes, this inhibitory inhibitory direction starts with this letting yourself stop thinking the extraneous thoughts Mm -hmm. and then you can send instructions to yourself such as i'm not tensing my neck Mm -hmm. exactly if you're if you're feeling tense in your neck there's something that probably can be done through your words to change that you don't have to do an exercise. You don't have to roll your neck around your head around. You're simply asking for those unconscious messages that are already tensing your neck to cease. I'm yeah, exactly. not tensing my neck. Exactly. Yeah. And you can expand that to uh, pretty much any part of your body you want. Not tensing my torso, not tensing my legs, arms, etc. And once you develop a little facility with that... Um, you can uh, do some pretty interesting ones, such as uh, my favorite, I'm not breathing. Mm -hmm. Uh, Also, I'm not lying down. 
And yes. um, those are uh, a little uh, tricky to explain why they're so effective. My my general take on it is when you say something like, I'm not breathing, you're really saying, I'm not breathing in my habitual way of breathing. Uh, body, mind, figure out a better way. Yes. Which I, is I way too long way. to tell yourself, but <laughs> your body gets it, right? I mean, uh, with a little practice, I... Uh, I think for a lot of people, they'll be absolutely astonished at what happens when they uh, use those uh, negative directions. And I think lying down or constructive rest, whatever we want to call it, is a perfect framework within which to explore those on your own or if you're if you're having Alexander lessons. Yes, I agree. And when we are upright, we're already having so many more things to do. Not mm-hmm. even the task, you know, not even the washing the dishes or going back to work or, you know, making the bed, whatever. But that your body, your brain is unconsciously keeping you upright. Your brain is unconsciously you coordinating all those muscles to move you and locomote you. And so there's not quite as much availability of brain power to practice this new thinking. So it's much simpler to start practicing these new ideas like I'm not tensing myself or allow the head to go forward and up while you're lying down. It just simplifies things. Absolutely. It, 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 you don't have to deal with uh, being upright in a gravitational field. Gravity is now at right angles to you. And uh, as I said before, we're just biomechanically uh, encouraging all those directions, um, making it very easy to to put them into practice. Uh, Ruth, is there anything else you want to say about constructive rest? Uh, Just a little bit about working on yourself. And that's another phrase that we use for this time you spend on your own, whether it's lying down, inactive rest, semi-supine, and not thinking about anything or thinking or starting to actually observe how you move and experiment with it Um, that I I would think the trickiest part for people who are working on their own without a teacher is what does it really mean to allow myself to lengthen and widen how to how to do that without doing it without Mm -hmm. trying to stretch yourself or create a different shape and that's true for all of us who have had a lot of lessons with teacher's hands-on. For those of you who do have Alexander teachers available in your area, it would be really great to have even a few lessons so you start getting a sense of what what it means not to do. And this is what the teacher's hands and words can guide you with, which is all pretty tricky to do just on your own. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. If... if um... And I would actually, now that you said that, uh, it occurs to me that for someone who perhaps is thinking about taking some Alexander lessons but doesn't want to commit to um, any larger number of lessons but but is willing to maybe take one or two or three to to get a little bit of an idea of what the technique is about, they might want to approach that with with telling their teacher, you know, I want to really work, uh, do a lot of, um, not a lot, but I'd like to use constructive rest as a framework for exploring some ideas. Can you help me with that? Can you show me, for example, a, a good number of uh, height of support under my head, uh, check to make sure I am lying down in a useful way, and maybe give me some suggestions for self-direction? And I'm just going to go off and explore this for a few weeks or months. And, um, you know, at some point, that that person might decide, well, that's great. Now, how about taking those ideas into activities like moving around, which, of course, is, in a way, the heart of the Alexander technique. And they might want to come back for more lessons. That sounds like a really good idea. I never thought of that before. This is like a whole new uh, (laughs) new idea. When I give lecture demonstrations or beginning classes and also with my private students, I really first focus on the lying down 
And I tell my students, if you never take another lesson, you have this. Mm-hmm. I want This is really about self-care, and I am a facilitator for that. So I want them to go away with something that they can do for themselves. Mm-hmm. And semi-supine, lying down time is that thing. Absolutely. Well, this might be a good place to bring our conversation to an end, unless there's anything else you want to add. I think we've contributed to the conversation about semi-supine in a full way, and I wish you a very happy new year. Well, and the same to you. Uh, my, my, We're talking right at the beginning of 2012. Um, my, my guest today uh, has been Ruth Rutberg, who is an Alexander Technique teacher in Amherst, Massachusetts. And if uh, anything we've talked about intrigues you uh, and you live in the Amherst area, we'll put a link to Ruth's website by the interview. We'll also put a link to a site that will allow you to find a teacher anywhere in the world. And we'll also put a link to a page on that site which has a... um, a lot more information on the on constructive rest interviews with other teachers illustrations articles blogs videos you name it it's all there uh, anything you ever wanted to know about constructive rest and robert thank you so much for putting all that material out and available to everyone well that was an easy job actually i just pulled it all together and put it on a page but Anyway, Ruth, thank you so much for being on the show today. Thank you. It was my pleasure.